All right, another thing that we're going to do here is that we're going to uh, change the uh, primary key of the, uh, of the widget. We're going to change it from a string. We're going to change it to a, an integer, right? When I do that, it's going to break a whole bunch of things, right? Because there's a lot of things that depend on this being a string. Let's try and see if our refactor mechanism works. We're going to refactor, and we're going to say um, uh, rename, uh, no, replace. Uh, it's not letting me, let's see, um, refactor, rename, type, type migration, there it is. So I'm going to change that from a string, I'm going to change it to a, be an integer. And we're going to do a refactor. Uh, so it's saying that there's several things that cannot convert because if you remember, there was a whole bunch of uh, strings that we were using to, for the hard-coded ones, right? Uh, we're just going to ignore that. That's, that's going to give us a lot of um, errors. In the, it probably, I believe, in the, in the service class, in the service class, I notice that we're implementing all these strings, which is fine. What we're going to do is that I'm just going to blow away this, this, um, this, this uh, hard-coded content because, again, we're not going to be using not even this widget list anymore, right? We're going to replace that with a, uh, uh, with a database, right? Uh, but let's just check to see if, uh, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the migration worked. Uh, looks like like it did. Notice that we have the find widget by ID. Now it's an integer. It used to be a string. Um, uh, also in the controller, is that working? The controller, uh, let's see, widget ID. Yep, it's an integer. Perfect. Uh, put mapping integer. Perfect. Integer. Okay, so it looks like it, it worked everywhere, right? Um, actually, no, it looks like something is amiss. Oh, yeah, the, here we were trying to instantiate a, a widget. Um, um, this were just, we, we would just, uh, you know, um, just playing around here. I'm just going to erase these uh, these two endpoints, right? All right, let's restart the server. Let's see if this if this compiles just fine. Okay, looks like everything is is still okay, compiled. And and that, but now that we've converted the uh, the primary key of the of this into an integer, I can now, for instance, tell the tell the database right to handle these, the uniqueness of this primary key. So I don't want to have to handle and you know, calculate what a unique identifier for me. Instead, I'm just going to uh, delegate this to the database. To delegate this, we can tell the database that this is a generated, this is a generated value, right? And, a, and, and, um, and databases typically provide different strategies for generating new values, right? In, in uh, MySQL, typically what we use is called an auto increment. The auto increment will, 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 what will do is that whenever you insert a brand new record, right, it'll just calculate what the next counter will be for that primary key. Right? So the way we, to turn that on is to, is to configure a strategy. There's several strategies depending on who the vendor is and what different strategies your database supports. Right? Uh, for SQL Server and for uh, MySQL, uh, the, this, uh, this, uh, this strategy called the identity strategy, right, uh, turn on auto increment in MySQL and turn identity in SQL Server, which basically does the same thing. It you know, starts at one and then it increments from there, two, three, four, five. Uh, if instead you're using Oracle, there's also uh, another strategy called uh, sequence, right? That's a very common strategy in Oracle databases, right? Where you create a really la large uh, set of unique identifiers and then you pick out from that unique identifier to you for your primary key. We don't have Oracle. Instead, we're going to use SQL, so I'm going to use the identity strategy. Okay. Once we have that and um, and and rerun the ser the, the server. Okay. The um, the, uh, the 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 JPA would would want to have modified our ID, which is which was uh, implemented as a as a string would want to modify into an integer and an auto increment. Let's see if it, if it, if it, was, if it was able to do that. Uh, let's open a SQL and let's take this widget. I'm going to send this over, send to the SQL editor, the create statement. Notice that it was not able to, to do it. Notice that the uh, uh, ID is still a varchar, it's not an integer, and it did not configure the auto increment. Right? This is one of the things that JPA cannot do. Right? You can either do it by hand and do the alter your, yourself. Right? Um, or I'm just going to be lazy. I'm just going to blow away the entire uh, the entire table. Right? I'm going to drop it. Obviously, if I have data here, I would not do that. Right? Uh, so I dropped it. 
And so let's rerun this from scratch. Let's rerun the server. So what it did, it went to, it saw that the table was there, so it didn't blow away from me, right, because it was an update. If, I if, if it would have been create, it would have blown away the database, right, the, 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 that table would have recreated from scratch. Uh, so there it is. Notice that it did create it. Notice that it, it indeed it, it uh, made it an integer and an auto increment. We can go back and um, and send this schema again to see the new table. Let's refresh. There's our new table, and let's send the create table to the SQL editor. Oops. Uh, let's see. Do it again. The create. Notice that now, right? ID is an integer, and it added the auto increment at the end. Make sense? Right? Before it was, it declared this as a as a primary key as a, as a varchar. Now it's an, an increment as an as an integer. Everybody good? All right.